His check on stories we're following for you on Robin Hood Radio. At 5 p.m., film screening The Art of Work at the Cornwall Library. It is held via Zoom. Women's Support Services is holding a volunteer certification training in July and August. Trainings are available if you would like to sign up or find out more information. Contact Deanna Barry at dbarry at wssdv.org. St. John's Lutheran Church on Route 7 in Ancrum, New York, is having their annual chicken barbecue on Saturday the 18th. A ticket donation takeouts are $15. Pick up 430 to 6. You must order. Tickets are limited to reserve tickets, 518-755-8978, 518-329-0038. The Sharon Playhouse will present the Jersey Tenors July 18th and 19th. The July 18th show is sold out. Ticket price and more information available at SharonPlayhouse.org for the show on the 19th. Once again, it's not a per-ticket basis, it's a per-car basis. A couple of assistance programs being offered by the State of Connecticut. There's the State of Connecticut Temporary Mortgage Assistance Program, TMAP. The Connecticut Housing Finance Authority, with financial support from the state, has launched a homeowner assistance program for low- and moderate-income households in Connecticut who are struggling to pay their mortgages due to the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. And the State of Connecticut Temporary Rental Housing Assistance Program, TRHAP, has been established by the State of Connecticut. Connecticut to give financial support from the Connecticut Housing Finance Authority and the state of Connecticut for Connecticut residents impacted by COVID-19 administered through the Department of Housing for information on both those programs which have opened up. The number is 1-860-785-3111. 3111 Well, you've been between Sharon and Salisbury on Route 41, and you've seen the construction going on. Well, Eversource is upgrading electrical wires in several areas. The upgrade involves replacing the existing structures with steel structures. They're also installing new electric wires and upgrading the communication and grounding wires attached to the top of each structure. That work will continue through the end of 2020, Cleanup will take longer than that after the work is done. New ordinances drafted by the committee and subsequently approved by the North Canaan Town Attorney are scheduled to be presented at a special meeting of the Board of Selectmen held online Monday, July 27th. Selectman Craig Whiting said the new ordinances are considered to be a living document subject to amendment and circumstances warrant. Residents will be able to view the proposed ordinances on the website at northcanaan.org. Now, following the July 27th special meeting, Selectman will reach a decision on the ordinances at their next regular meeting sometime in early August. In Northeast, the town board held its first in-person meeting on Thursday, July 9th, since the coronavirus pandemic forced it to go to virtual meetings. Town Supervisor Chris Kennan said last week's meeting, which was at the Northeast Millerton Library Annex instead of Town Hall, as the annex is larger and can accommodate social distancing more easily, was difficult due to the extreme heat made tougher as everybody was wearing face masks. One item of the business, the approval of the bond anticipation note for the joint Highway Garage on Route 22 shared with the village of Millerton. Councilman George K. gave an update on its progress. Currently, the town is in Phase 2 of construction for a salt and storage shed. McEnroe Farm had closed its markets for just about a half day on Wednesday, July 8th, and a full day on Thursday, July 9th, because one of its employees attended a family function where someone reported testing positive for the coronavirus five days later. The store fully reopened on Saturday the 11th, quoting here, just in case they got all their employees tested, everything came back negative, and they reopened the next day. McEnroe got to deep clean the store and is now safe for the employees and the customers. Hospitals are seeking state funds for elective surgeries resuming, but many facilities are battered by losses in the state, with the state recording fewer new coronavirus cases and people returning to restaurants and stores. Residents are in need of routine urgent medical have also ventured back into the hospitals after months of sluggish emergency room traffic and 
no selective surgeries. Connecticut's hospitals have seen a rise in demand for those services. Outpatient procedures and primary care appointments have resumed, even if some patients are still keeping their distance. According to Connecticut Governor Ned Lamont, younger age groups are the most coronavirus cases in Connecticut now. The state's infection rate continues to hover about 1%, which is still one of the best in the nation. But earlier this week, the state released which age group has the most coronavirus cases in the state. The governor said residents between the ages of 20 and 29 have the most infections. That's followed by those aged 30 to 39. All the data is from last week, so any effects from July 4th is included in that. The most vulnerable ages, those in their 70s and 80s, now remain low because of increased vigilance. It's the demographic that should stay home, and it appears they are staying home. By the way, Connecticut's hospitalizations remain low, which indicates the younger population isn't seeing the devastating effects of the virus. Lamont is warning, though, the spikes among young adults is starting to be a concern to the state. Connecticut's U.S. Senators and Governor are calling for more COVID-19 relief legislation. Senator Blumenthal and Murphy joined Governor Lamont. They call for the U.S. Senate to pass legislation they said is needed to provide relief to state and local governments, families, frontline workers, and small businesses that are continuing to navigate the coronavirus pandemic. If you don't wear a mask in New York, what can happen? Well, businesses in New York vary to the extent to which they are enforcing state-mandated face coverings and social distancing policies to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Now the State Department of Health has increased the consequences for violations. Late last week, the agency updated its emergency regulations to include a minimum $1,000 fine for businesses that allow customers to enter or remain on their premises without wearing masks or practicing social distancing. The emergency measure also subjects non-compliant customers to a maximum $1,000 fine per violation. Fines would be issued after investigations were carried out either by the state health department or by county health departments, according to state health department spokesman Aaron Silk. In New York State, the start of the fall high school sports season has been delayed because of coronavirus. New York State Public High School Athletic Association officials said they voted to set the official start date for teams at its member school teams to September 21st. The original date for practices was going to be August 24th. Farm to Label Cannabis Operation will open today in Sheffield, a full story of the Berkshire Eagle. Outside, a fast stretch of Route 7 cutting through some of the town's cornfields. Inside, workers are dealing with another kind of plant. It's grown on site. They get set to open Berkshire County's newest pot shop today. It was only Tuesday that the press... Amid strict state rules, it has taken company partners and founders Christopher Weld and Michael Cohen almost three years to build the business and navigate the regulatory maze to open the farm-to-label operation just over the Great Barrington Line. Weld also owns Berkshire Mountain Distillers, which is also in Sheffield. Our business brief is underwritten by Morgans at the Interlake and Interlakeinn.com and also underwritten by Salisbury Bank, SalisburyBank.com. The Dow Jones Industrial Average was down 135.39 to 26,734.71. The NASDAQ was down 76.66 to 10,473.83. And the S&P 500 was down 10.99 to 3,215.57. We'll take a look at the tri-state forecast. That'll come your way in just a few moments.